Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Grow Models of Embryos in the Lab? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature, published on March 25, 2021. Research conducted by Jun Wu and Gary Hong at the Department of Molecular Biology and the Cecil H. and Ida Green Center for Reproductive Biology Sciences, both at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Studying embryos is important to understanding how humans develop. It can also help us understand some pregnancy complications. But access to embryos is very limited. We wanted to find a way to study embryos without actually needing any. We use stem cells to grow models of blastocysts young embryos. Our experiments showed that stem cells can form structures that look like blastocysts. We called these models blastoids. Blastoids grow and develop at a similar speed as blastocysts. They also have the same size and cell composition. They are not embryos and cannot develop into an organism, but blastoids are a useful way to study human development. Introduction. Did you know that at the very beginning of our lives, we are all made of a single cell? This initial cell divides into two, and then four, eight, sixteen, and so on. As cells multiply, they become a blastocyst. Blastocysts have two different structures, an outer layer and an inner mass. With time, the cells from the inner mass of the blastocyst start to gain unique characteristics and become different types of cells heart cells, lung cells, brain cells, etc. We call this process differentiation. Thanks to differentiation, this mass of cells will slowly become an embryo, which will later be born as a baby. Here in figure one, you can see the stages of embryo development from a single cell to a blastocyst. The image at the top left is on day one before the cell has started dividing. By day two, seen in the upper right, you can see four cells inside the membrane. By day five, seen in the lower right, you can see the outer layer of cells forming the blastocyst. Studying embryos is very important. It can help us understand how humans develop, how organs form, and how some diseases appear. But access to human embryos is very limited. This is a big problem. How are scientists supposed to study embryos without access to them? In this study, we grew 3D models of blastocysts using stem cells. There are many types of stem cells. Some stem cells have an ability called pluripotency. This means they can develop into all cell types in our body. Once they differentiate, these stem cells lose their pluripotency. This prevents your lung cells from suddenly becoming heart cells. The aim of our experiments was to program stem cells to differentiate into the cells that form a blastocyst. This way, we could study embryos without needing any. We called these models blastoids. Methods. First, we checked the ability of stem cells to generate different types of cells within a blastocyst. To do this, we grew the cells in a single layer on culture plates in vitro, Latin for in glass. This technique allows scientists to grow cells in a controlled environment. The chemical solutions we use to grow the cells determine their differentiation outcome. For this reason, we grew different populations of cells in different solutions. These experiments showed that they indeed had the ability. We then changed to growing the cells in 3D culture plates. We used different chemical solutions one after another and let the cells grow and differentiate for a few days. Next, we checked if the structures they had formed looked like blastocysts. Figure two models growing a blastoid in a deeper 3D culture plate where the cells have more space to organize themselves. The 3D culture plate here looks like an inverted pyramid. The following steps from left to right show the same progression of cell division and differentiation as the photos in figure one. 
Here, the different colors represent cells that have differentiated to eventually perform different jobs. We used immunofluorescence to analyze which types of cells composed our models. Specific types of cells produce certain proteins. Immunofluorescence uses special dyes to make these proteins glow in different colors. Using a microscope, we can then recognize different types of cells and their distribution in blastoids. Afterward, we took samples of individual cells from the blastoids and checked their RNA composition. We wanted to see which genes were on or off. We call this their transcriptional state. We compared the transcriptional states of cells from blastoids and of real blastocyst cells. Finally, we tested a key feature of blastocysts, their ability to continue to grow after attaching to the uterus. To do so, we let the blastoids attach to the flat culture plates and studied their further growth in vitro. Results our experiment led us to the following results. One, stem cells do have the ability to form blastocyst models. After several days of growth, blastoids had the same size and cell composition as blastocysts. Two, our models had developed all the right types of cells. Thanks to immunofluorescence, we also observed that cells were in the right places. Here in Figure 3, you can see a blastoid image generated using immunofluorescence. Each color represents a different protein. Can you tell the difference between the inner mass and the outer layer of the blastoid? 3. The transcriptional states of cells within blastoids and blastocysts were similar. And 4. Blastoids can attach to the culture plates, which is similar to their attachment to the uterus and can grow further in vitro. Discussion. We were able to grow models that were like blastocysts in shape and cell composition. Blastoid cells form the same structures as blastocysts. They also express similar genes, but our blastocyst models have some limitations. One, not all blastoids developed at the same speed. Their efficiency to develop was different depending on their growing conditions. Two, blastoid cells didn't have the exact same transcriptional state as blastocyst cells. Three, most blastoids were not able to grow properly after attaching onto the culture plate. And four, the process of producing blastoids took a relatively long time. So there is room for improvement. Still, Blastoids represent a new unique way to study the development of embryos. They can also be helpful for studying pregnancy defects and their possible treatments. Conclusion. Even though blastoids are not embryos, they show great potential for embryo research. They are an alternative way to study human development. Stem cells offer a way to work around some of the ethical dilemmas that come with working with embryos. But the use of stem cells in research goes far beyond blastoids. Some researchers are starting to grow whole organs using stem cells. Imagine you were sick and you needed a new heart or a new lung. Wouldn't it be amazing if scientists could grow your new organ in the lab? It sounds like an impossible task, but keep your eyes open because it is not as far in the future as you might think. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.